I'm not going to do any fancy overhead shots. I haven't got time today. <laughs> Welcome to today's vlog. Today is the 600th episode of Dan's vlog, which is quite incredible. We're not doing any balloons, there's no mad uh, fly pass by the RAF. It's just me and you in the studio talking about saxophone books later on. If you're new here, please do hit a like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference to the videos I can make. And I was just reflecting on my 500th vlog episode, which I filmed in June 2019. We were at 8,000 then, we're just approaching 11,000, which is incredible. Thank you to every single one of you who is a subscriber. You mean an awful lot to me. The community that we've been able to build through this has been incredible. And in this 500 to 600 series of Dan's Vlog, I've been so pleased to have the community that you guys have helped create. You've got me through, along with my family and my friends, the probably the two hardest periods of my life. I had a pretty pretty incredibly tough 2019 personally it involved breaking up with my wife moving out twice uh, first to the, the house uh, the sort of house in the country where i got burgled and all my camera equipment got stolen uh, to coming here to what has turned out to be a really great family home i do miss my old studio uh, i was watching the 500 vlog today and i'm thinking gosh that studio had a lot of possibilities and a lot of um Good things but you know it's great you've got to seize the moment and it was actually a member of our community AJ who said to me way back when I was going through the really really toughest times of it you know you can either be better or you can be bitter and you've got to choose to be better and I have chosen to be better and it's been hard and you know if you're going through particularly difficult times in your life whether it's the lockdown which all of us are going through in the world in various different ways it's hard it's hard on our mental health it's hard on our physical health it's hard creatively to be able to get through things when you're in the middle of a pandemic when you can't go out there and play as i spoke about in my last vlog but if you're going through things like a family break or the death of a close loved one or you know, lots and lots of stress in your personal life maybe an illness or something else like that you've been touched to it's in those times that you've got to choose how to react and at times you might choose not to react in the way that you wanted to but honestly try and stay positive try and use that opportunity to be better and I'm trying to do that every single day there are days when I just can't vlog and there particularly when it all happened and I'll talk about that in a minute um, I couldn't bring myself to play a note I couldn't bring myself to make a vlog or do anything but actually once I broke through that and I kept on going it was amazing and I always look back to a gig I did in September 2019. Um, I remember I did the classical one which I'll talk about in a moment, the classical sax and organ, but it was a gig at the end of September 2019. I just moved into my other house, I just started to find my feet again and then I was having to go out and play this gig and I hadn't really practiced for six weeks. I'd been focusing on surviving, seeing my children, working through what was going to happen. And I remember showing up at the gig and sort of saying to the guys, look I apologize, I don't think I'm going to be on it tonight. Um, you know, just to be able to show up and play here tonight is amazing. And I had one of the best gigs I've ever had because I didn't walk in with any pressure on myself. I walked in and I just played and I played my heart out and, and touched people. It reminded me of something about the Bramford said to me. He says, what you're trying to do is rip your chest open and bare your soul. And if you can do that in your playing, if you can touch people with your playing, then sometimes the notes don't necessarily matter. So as is customary, I'm wearing the grey jumper today. I haven't worked out how to market these grey jumpers for all of you, so you can maybe get a little Stan's logo or saxophone logo in the corner. But anyway, 
nice and cold today as you saw on the uh, time lapse at the beginning but at this opportunity on vlog 600 I wanted to talk about my favorite vlogs from 500 to 599 and I've got them in reverse order so coming in at number five is the lockdown gigs how getting out there and playing concerts in the middle of this pandemic has saved me in so many different ways and, and getting down to Stapleford, Matt Dilley being able to organise that, there's something coming up new with Matt I'm going to talk about in a future vlog. But yeah, getting out there and playing. I remember walking out to the car on the May one and going, I used to hate, the, the bit I used to hate about gigs was loading the car or trying to remember everything and showing up. I actually loved it. I loved actually being able to load my car up and get out to the gig. So that was really, really, really enjoyable experience and something of course we never necessarily expected, none of us expected to happen this time last year. Speaking of things I never expected, Music Teacher of the Year 2020, that was pretty incredible as well. And I was awarded it about, well, about this time last year, 2019, moving into 2020, and there was supposed to be a big award ceremony that all got kiboshed because of COVID, so we ended up getting presented the award um, in, in August, and it was great to be able to take Amy and Charlie along to the presentation. And just a recognition of the hard work that my students put in, you know, it's amazing that, again, we had the results this week, another 100% set of pass rates. That means in 20 years of teaching, over 500 students going in for exams, everybody's passed. Number three was the classical sax and organ gig. Not only because I've been working so hard at it to be able to get to that stage, but it came right in the middle of the worst period of my life as I was moving out of the house and Kate and I were breaking up. Um, you know, not being able to see the kids at certain times and trying to build the practice in and I was offered the chance to postpone it do it another time and I was like no I've got to do this I've got to get up there and play and I've put the work in for it um, and, and it served as a great distraction to keep my focus on my work because if and if you can say this if you're going through tough times try and find something that you can focus on not necessarily to escape you've got to deal with the things but to have something that distracts you and gives you a purpose and gives you a fulfillment to move on with something else and to be able to give something to others because one of the things that I found really hard was receiving all the time I'm so used to giving out and to be the person who had to receive because I couldn't give anything out it was a really really difficult time so I always look upon that concert as a chance where I was able to give something out Related to that was the sit or stand one because actually it's a really important thing. Should you sit or should you stand to play the saxophone? And even yesterday, 
I've been looking at maybe whether I should sit or stand when I'm teaching because everything's been done online. Normally if I'm teaching in person I like to stand up and teach but actually now everything's online I'm sat down all day and it's not necessarily good for you so I've been looking at maybe getting a standing desk for my MacBook and I'll maybe do like a morning lessons or afternoon lessons stood up down there rather than doing them sat in this nice comfy office chair. And of course finally the best log I think of the last 500 to 599 episodes was the visit to the Selma factory in Paris. It was such a phenomenal experience. I say Paris, of course, it's outside of Paris in Mont, but it was an amazing experience to be able to go there, to see where my Mark VI was made, to see where John Coltrane's saxophone was made, Sonny's saxophone, everybody, you know what I said in the vlog there. But to see that home of the saxophone, that place, a mystical place to a certain extent that gets demystified a little bit by, by going into the factory. But just, yeah, an amazing place, an amazing opportunity. So thanks to Florent again to giving me that chance to go and uh, tour the factory with you guys, with the cameras. And I'm looking forward to getting back there soon and trying out their new prototype again. But maybe... I'm not always full of great ideas, but I do think today, before I put the bookshelf up, because I want to paint this room over Christmas, I may as well do these walls first. I don't have to take the bookshelf in and out. I might need to take the bookshelf in and out when I get there eventually. But I just thought actually if it's one less thing I can paint and if I can do this now and then also because my computer's there and all my Zoom calls and all my lessons this one needs to look good first. So there we go, slowly but surely getting there. New bookshelf, newly painted walls. Um, not on the other side though, on the door needs doing, I realise all that, but what I've managed to do in a day is quite good, quite impressed with that. Um, but I finally want to talk about books, because I've spoken about books before. I've spoken about how you can buy a lot of books and they not make sense, and I think that's where a good teacher comes in. A good teacher can help you understand what books you need to get. Now, I've said all that and I've realised I've left the package. I'm not gonna do any fancy overhead shots. I haven't got time today. <clears throat> One set of books I highly recommend, I've not been paid for this endorsement, are Greg Fishman's books. And these are what has arrived here. Set there for students of Greg's uh, jazz phrasing books. The phrasing books one, two, three are excellent. I use Greg's books in every single, almost every single lesson with students. At some stage, wherever they're at, the etu books for the more advanced students, uh, the phrasing books for those who are on the way there. They are excellent books. I would highly recommend them uh, to you. Um, check out my interview with Greg here if you haven't already. Um, they're books worthwhile getting, but you need to work on other things like your tone, your time, your scales. There's a couple of ebooks below there. You can have a little look in the description of mine. Uh, Make Your Sax Sing and uh, the Nail Your Scales. They're the two ebooks I've launched in this last 100 episodes of the vlog. I have a finger buster one coming soon when I stop painting walls stop reorganising bookshelves, and also stop practising my gig uh, that I recorded on Sunday. I've just managed to finally have a look at the uh, video. It's going to go out next weekend. That's not today, this weekend, but the following weekend, the 4th, 5th, 6th of December, and I've negotiated, and I'm so pleased to tell you that if you're a Patreon, you're going to get in early, but everybody is going to be able to watch it live. Sorry, watch it live for free! even. So um, I'll ping the link out nearer the time, but it's not going out as I hoped this weekend. It's been put back a weekend, but I have negotiated for that, for it to be streamed for free live on the Saffron Hall website. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for getting me to 600. This last 100 has been really, really tough. And uh, it's been really, really good though. But I'm apprehensive about saying I'm looking forward to the next 100. But I will get to 700 episodes of this vlog somehow. I've got to think of some new things to talk to you about. Uh, but thank you for inspiring me all the time. And uh, I'll see you really, really soon. Bye-bye.